Hello, this is the third in a series of videos on what we call 2 to the k minus p fractional factorials, fractions of full 2 to the k's. Prior to watching this video, you should have watched the first two videos and read the notes uh, on fractional factorial designs, parts 1 and 2. But well, one way in which people use fractional factorial designs is to adopt a sequential strategy. That is, instead of doing one large experiment, they'll start with a small fraction. And if they find in that small fraction they cannot confidently resolve what the important effects are, they'll actually augment that design. And that often works well with fractional factorials. They'll add some trials to take it to a second stage, maybe even a third. And at the second stage, there should be less aliasing. And perhaps we can now resolve what the significant effects are. And the easiest way to explain this is to show a good example. So this is a human factors experiment. In fact, this is a human vigilance where uh, this is actually a pilot looking at a cockpit display. And they're trying to discover what display design factors uh, are important to the person being able to easily view the display and acquire the target on the display. So they have seven factors. So a full 2 to the 7th would be 128 runs. There are a list of the seven factors. And the experimenter decided to go with a 2 to the 7 minus 4, a 16th of the 128 total runs. And this is a resolution 3 design. So main effects are aliased with one or more two-way interactions. And this is how the design was generated. So I've got to split the design in half four times. And I don't know where they generated the design, but these are the interactions or generating relations that were used to split the design four times. OK, so there you see the eight runs. And there you can see the singularity details. And as I said, every main effect is aliased with three different two-way interactions. I basically can look at this and say there is no way we'll ever figure out if significant effects are main effects or two-way interactions. There's just too much. The alias chains are simply too long. And there are too many possibilities for two-way interactions. But to illustrate, I'll go ahead and I'll just quickly show you jump. I'll do an analysis of the data. Again, this design is not replicated. So I would have to use the screening platform. So I go to Analyze, Modeling, Screening. I'll put in my seven factors. And time is the response. And again, jump is only going to show you the main effects. Keep in mind the main effects are aliased with many different interactions. And you can see four of them, B, D, A, and G, seem to be significant. But take a look at the alias chain. So D is aliased with three two-way interactions that it could involve A, G, E, and F. B likewise, G likewise, and A likewise. In other words, I have no idea what's going on. These could be main effects. They could be two-way interactions and probably some combination of both. So at this point, there's no strategy that will reduce this design. In other words, I can't throw out any main effects. There's just too much confounding. So basically, the researcher has not gotten very lucky on the first attempt. So what we would want to do at this point 
is augment the design. In other words, I need to add additional trials so that I can break the aliases between the main effects and the two-way interactions. In other words, I want to go from a resolution 3 to a resolution 4. So remember, in resolution 4, two-way interactions are only aliased with two-way interactions. So how would I do this? Well, it turns out if I add eight additional runs, I can actually accomplish the task of moving from resolution 3 to 4, if I pick the right eight runs. So the data set iMovement2 has the uh, two sets of runs. Notice they've been put in separate blocks. They were done at separate uh, points in time. And what we're going to do is actually take a look at this design. Okay. So I'm going to call up the iMovement2. And then later I'm going to show you how this was actually generated. Okay. So I'm going to go to Fit Model. Okay. And I know that there's aliasing between two-way interactions. So again, I'll show you. I'll highlight all seven factors. And I'll create a factorial to degree two. Time is the response. Okay. And as expected, okay, every two-way interaction is aliased with two others. But now they're not aliased with main effects, so now I have a chance at figuring out what's significant. So remember, from each chain, I can pick only one interaction. So we typically pick the ones by either some alphanumeric ordering. So I'm going to pick the ones on the left-hand side. All the two ways involving A, and then I'll pick the BD interaction. Okay, so we'll set that aside for now. So basically, what I want to do, let's see if we can get this to do what I want it to do. So I'm going to close that window and go to Fit Model. And I want to fit all the interactions involving A. Okay. So what I could do is, like, once again, just fit a factorial to degree 2, go through, and get rid of all the interactions I don't want. So remember, I am keeping BD. So I'm going to get rid of BC, BF, BE. In fact, I'm going to get rid of all the remaining interactions. Okay. So there is final design. When I accidentally removed, I want BD, so I'm just going to add it back in. Time is the response. Okay. And again, we have the problem that there is no uh, replication. If I take a look at this, by the way, I could go ahead and use the screening platform. But notice something very interesting. The biggest effects by far are B, D, and the B, D interaction. It turns out that this is actually a really good model. So in 16 runs, I've determined that the only important effects are B, D, and their interaction. Okay. Not bad. So what I would do is just go back to Fit Model. And I would pick B and D and fit a full factorial model. Time is the response. Okay. And at this point, we could do things like use the profiler to understand the relationship between time to acquire target. Um, in fact, we'll just do that. So 
desirability functions and this time I want to minimize. Smaller acquisition time, the better. So I would just go over and maximize desirability. So it would say B low and D low. Okay, so that actually has solved my problem. So even though I only I had to do 16 runs, again I've got seven factors, that's not bad. And the slides take you through the analysis that was done. And what we've actually done here is something called augmenting designs. And I'm going to take that up in the next video.